All right, let's move on to a different type of problem because this is all empirical probability, which is you just kind of put the numerator over the denominator. Let's see if there's a different type. Uh, let's try number 19. So a medical researcher administers an experimental medical treatment to 200 patients. So that's a total number of patients, 200. The patients in the study are categorized by blood types A, B, A, B, and O. The researcher observed that the treatment had a favorable outcome for 24 of the 80 patients with type A, 11 of the 22 with type B, 88 out of the eight patients with type AB, and none of the 90 patients with type O. Determine the empirical probability of a favorable outcome for those patients with type A. Well, with type A, let's see. Type A, it said, 24 of the 80 were favorable outcomes. So 24 out of 80, that's why that's the answer. And they converted it to a decimal too, which you can, you can, all you have to do on your calculator is divide 24 divided by 80. And that's how you get 0.3. Let's just do the, uh, let's just do type AB this time. So type AB would have been eight out of eight. So eight out of eight, which is one. All right, and type B would have been 11 of 12, I'm sorry, 22. 11 of 22. Which is, uh, I think it's 0 0.5, right? Half, a half. Uh -huh. And then type O would have been? Zero. Zero out of 90. Zero out of 90, which is zero. <clears throat> All right, let's do these other ones. These are a little bit more interesting, the ones that have um, classical probability. Um, let's look at number 23. The multiple choice test question has five possible choices. If you randomly select one of the choices, what is the probability that you select the correct choice? So does anybody know what? how many correct choices would there be out of five? One. Just one correct choice. And then the total number of possibilities is five so one out of five yeah just one out of five because there's only one correct answer and there's five choices to choose from so what about what's probably that somebody gets an incorrect choice four out of five four yeah there's four incorrect answers and there's five total um choices so four out of five if you can eliminate two of the five choices randomly um and randomly select one of the remaining choices, what's the probability that you select the correct choice? So if you can limit two of the five choices, so now there's only three choices, right? Because you eliminate two, so now you're left with three total possibilities. So there's a three, and there's only one correct answer, so it's gonna be one out of three. Right, then the, now if the incorrect answers, there's gonna be two incorrect and three total possible choices to choose from. All right, let's go on to number 25. Here's a good one. One card is drawn from the standard deck of 52. Determine the probability that the card selected is a club. Anybody know how many clubs there are? 13. 52. 13? Yeah, each suit, there's 13 cards of, in each, of each suit, so there's 13 clubs out of 52. All right, let's go with the face card. How many face cards are there? 12. Yeah, I think there's three of each type, right? So there's three. King, queen, jack, three of them. Yeah, uh, jack, queen, king, and there's three, uh, four suits. So that's four times three is 12 out of 52. All right, let's try a red card and a king. How many red king cards are there? Two. Um, yeah, there's just two red king cards, right? One of them is a yeah, heart. A, a heart and a diamond. And a diamond. So there's only two kings that are red and out of 52. So two out of 52. All right, so that's good enough. Let's look at one of the spinner problems. So here we have a spinner. And it says, assume that the spinner cannot land on a line. So it's not going to land on the line. Assume that. 
determine the probability that the spinner lands on the red, green, yellow, and not yellow. So let's start with red. So, is this supposed to be the same color? Yeah, right? Yeah. I yeah, that's supposed to be. I think so. It looks a little bit off, but I think it's meant to be the same color. But you can divide it. So now how many total equal parts are there? Four. There's four equal parts, so that's your denominator. And then what's the probability that it lands on red? One. There's just one red part. So one fourth. So we'll call that part A. Part B would be green. What would the fraction be for the green? Two out of four. Yeah, there's two greens out of four total. So that would be two out of four. C would be yellow. How many yellow parts are there? Just one. Just one out of four. And then finally, D says not yellow. How many non-yellow parts are there? Three. Yeah, one two, three are non-yellow, so that yeah. means three out of four, yeah. All right, so we only did number 35, that's good enough. Let's look at, um, what else? Let's look at the Wheel of Fortune. So it says, use a small replica of the Wheel of Fortune, here it is, and then they say, if the wheel is spun, determine the probability that the indicated sector will stop under the pointer. So $2,500. So we have to figure out what's the total number of sectors. Anybody know how many total there are? So hold on. The one out of one over 12? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You're right. So twelve. And there's only one twenty five hundred, I believe, right? That one? Yeah. So one out of twelve, yeah. All right. Let's go to number forty-nine. Number less than three thousand. So how many numbers are less than three thousand? Nine. Yeah, it looks like it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine numbers that are under three thousand. Nine out of twelve. There it is. Nice. All right. So let's see. Let's go with number fifty-three. Well, let's do fifty-one and then we'll, we'll do fifty-three. So 51 says the letter S is selected in the word Tennessee. How many letters are there in Tennessee? Um, nine? Nine, yeah. So the denominator is gonna be nine because there's nine total letters. Yeah. And what's the probability that an S is selected? Two. Yeah, there's only two S's, so that would be two out of nine. nine. And now let's do the... Number 53, consonant. Does anyone know which ones are consonants? Consonants? Um, let's see, one, two, three. Are, I. Consonants, are consonants the ones that are not vowels? Right. All right, so T, N, N, S, N, right? T, N, N, S, S, so that would be five. Five out of nine. All right, let's do maybe one more set of problems. So maybe let's do these over here. It says a cooler contains 66 cans of soda, 24 of Coke, 12 of Diet Coke, nine of Dr. Pepper, 15 of Mountain Dew, six of Diet Pepsi. And if one can of soda is randomly selected, determine the probability that the can is Coca-Cola. So we have to count them all, right? Oh, but it kind of tells you already what the total is, right? Mm -hmm. 
the total is 66. So that's nice. They added them for us, but you could add them 24 plus 12 plus 9 plus 15 just to make sure, plus 6. But it should be 66. So that is our denominator. All right. And how many Coca Cola cans are there? 12. I think it's 24, right? Diet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's do the diet soda one. 61. How many diet sodas are there? Oh, it's 12. Is it 12? Mm -hmm. I think I see a little bit more. Oh, wait, 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 wait. And. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you got Diet Coke and uh, Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi. So six and 12, which is? 28. Six and 12. Oh, that's, I think that's a six, right? Yeah, that's a six. Oh, I thought it was a one, sorry. Yeah, so that's all right. So that is going to be 18, right? 18 out of 66 total. All right. And that is pretty much it. I think that's good enough. Um, so let's move on to today's topic, which is 11.2. Let me bring those notes up. Yeah, so let's just change this to be 11.2 instead of 12.3. All right, odds. So, you know, in like in Vegas or in sports, they always talk about odds. What are the odds of, of, of I don't know, the, the Phoenix Suns winning the world, the championship or the Dodgers winning the next game or whatever it may be. So odds is, is um, used in probability, in probability and bets and sports and things like that. So the odds against um, so let's see, the odds against being audited by the IRS this year are about 47 to 1. All right, so let's see what that means. All right, so there's a couple ways to write it. You can write it the way they did, 47 to 1, or you can write it, whoops, or you can write that as 47 colon 1. That's a different way to write it. Or you can write it as a fraction, 47 over 1. So there's three ways total to write a uh, ratio this way, this way, or that way. All right, so um, this represents the, let's see, the against being audited. So against, that's the key word against. That means that this number here, the first number represents the number not, uh, the number of people not being audited, not being, oops, being audited. And then this number is going to be uh, being the number being of being audited. Because of the word against, that's the reason why the first number has to be the people not being audited. And the second number has to be the people being audited. All right, so all right, so that's pretty much it. <clears throat> Um, so if they were to ask, what's the prob probability of someone that's, uh, the probability of being audited, being, whoops, audited, that would be, the total is going to be 48 because there's 47 and 1, so that means there's a total of 48 people, and only one of them is being audited out of the 48, so the probability of being audited is 1 out of 48. All right, so that's what that means. You have to add these two numbers up to get the total in the denominator. And then the probability of being audited would be this number. The probability of not being audited would be 47 out of 48. All right, so that's, um, let's see what this says, the, odd, the odds in favor of being audited by the IRS is here about one to 47. This time the word fit in favor or yeah, favor, that means that the first number represents the people being audited and the second number represents the people not being audited. All right. 
All right, so now let's look at the definition. Here in this box, we're gonna write the definition out. The odds against an event are the probability of an event fails to occur to the probability that the event occurs. That's how you, um, that's the definition of odds against. It's a probability that of an event that an event fails to occur to the event, the probability that the event does occur. All right, you can also write that as a fraction. So instead of writing it like that, you could write it like a fraction. Yeah, like that. So you, you don't have to write it in this form. You can write it in that form. Either form is fine. All right, and so the odds in favor are just gonna be reversed, right? So the odds in favor are going to be the probability that an event occurs to the probability that the event fails to occur. All right. Mr. Arnales, mm -hmm. can I write event fails to not occur? Yeah, that's okay. Uh huh. That's, okay. that's good. Yeah, good. All right. So now let's look at this first example. In his wallet, Sean has 12 bills, six are $1 bills, and two are $5 bills. So that's a total of 12. There are $10, there are three are $10 bills, and one is $20 bills. He passes a volunteer seeking donation for the Salvation Army and decides to select one bill at random from his wallet and give it to the Salvation Army. Determine the probability that he selects a a five dollar bill all right so let's see five dollar bill right so for this one this first problem has nothing to do with odds they don't they don't mention the word odds that's in part c so for part a and b it's just probability probability part c is odds so part a and part b are just stuff that we've learned already so let's see if we can figure this out how many total bills are there There are 12 total bills, right? So that's your denominator. And then how many $5 bills are there? There's one, uh, two. So it's two out of 12, right? Can you break that down or just leave it like that? Uh, yeah, I would break it down. Uh, I would simplify. We can divide by two, right? And get one, six. Oh, six. So one out of six probability that he gets a $5 bill out of his wallet or whatever. All right, so now we have to figure out part B, which says what's the probability that he does not select a $5 bill. So how many bills are not $5 out of the 12? Well, if two of them are $5 bills and there's a total of 12, how many are not $5 bills? He's got 12 bills. Two of them are $5 bills. So how many are not $5 bills? Because you only have two $5 bills and there's a total of 12. So that means 10 of them are not $5 bills, right? Yeah. So 10. And you can uh, simplify that uh, five out of six. Uh, by two again, right? Uh-huh. So that's gonna be five out of six. All right. So now we can move on. Now we're gonna do odds. So this is where you have to use the formulas, either this one or this one. So let's do odds in favor first. So the key word is favor. So that's gonna be the probability that- Odds in favor. 
that if he does get a $5 bill divided by the probably that he does not get a $5 bill. So does get $5 divided by does not get $5 bill. All right, so what's the probability that he gets a $5 bill? One over six. Yeah, one over six divided by what's probably that he does not get a five dollar bill uh five over six about a six about a six and so um remember how do we divide fractions we multiply by the reciprocal so it's one six divided by five six is the same thing as one six times the reciprocal so you have to flip the second fraction mm -hmm. and then you can cross out the sixes So the final answer is one fifth. One to, you can write it as one over five, or you can say one to five. Whoops. One to five. Those are the odds. <laughs> All right. So, so probability and odds are kind of similar, but they're a little different. The probability is just the fraction like this. And then when they say odds, that's when you have to divide the two probabilities. And when you divide, you have to multiply by the reciprocal, and then you're going to get a fraction, and you can turn that into a into a statement that says one to five in this case. Either way is fine. So you can write it. You can leave it as a fraction, or you can say one to five. The odds are one to five. All right. So let's now let's do the the odds against. All right. So it's going to be this. The formula now we're going to use is the second formula uh, the first formula so the event fails that means he does not get a five dollar bill divided by the event occurring meaning he does get a five dollar bill so we just reverse the numbers probably that does not does not get a five dollar bill five out of six yeah divided by does get a five dollar bill so the top is going to be five out of six. The bottom is going to be one out of six, right? We just reverse these two numbers. And we do the same thing. We multiply by the reciprocal. Sixes will cancel. And this time it's going to be five over one, which is the same thing as five to one. So the odds are five to one that he will not get a five dollar bill. All right, so let's look at the next problem. It says a die is tossed. Determine the odds against rolling a number less than three. So the key word is against, right? Yes. So we have to use a formula against the top one. So the probability fails divided by the probability occurs. So um, let's, let's first find the probability that that the number that the number is less than three. So first thing we'll do is number is less than three. Anybody know what the probability of getting a number that's less than three on a standard die? How many numbers are less than three on the die? So the numbers are one through Five? six. Oh, six. Um, That's right. The, the numbers on a die are one, two, three, four, five, and six. How many of those are less than three? Two. 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 So it's two out of six, which is one third, right? All right. What's the probability that the number is not less than three? How many numbers are not less than three? Four. Four. Yeah, so four out of six, which is two thirds. All right, so now we can use the, the formula. So the formula against is going to be the probability that 
fails divided by the, the probability that it occurs. The probability that is not less than three divided by the probability that it is less than three. Not less than three divided by probability that it is less than three. So the probability that it's not less than three, we said is two over three. The probability that it is less than three is one third. So the odds are gonna be two thirds divided by one third, which we multiply by the reciprocal. And that's how we get two over one, right? Which can be written as two to one. Well, you can write the word two if you want to. Two, two, one. All right. So that's how you do these problems. <clears throat> so you have to find the two probabilities first, and then you divide them. And you have to just be careful which, which one goes on the top, and which one goes on the bottom, depending on if it says against or, or in favor of. All right, so let's look at the next problem. <clears throat> Mr. Nadez, are we gonna take a break? Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, let's take a break now. So go. since one person is selected at random from a class of 16 men and 14 women, determine the odds against selecting a woman. So here's the key word, against. So you, you always have to look for that word either against or in favor of. In this case, it's against. So remember the formula for against is the probability that it fails divided by the probability that it does happen. So the probability that it fails, that it against selecting a woman. So the probability that it's not a woman divided by the probability that it is a woman. So let's first find the probability of selecting a woman. What's the probability of selecting a woman? If there is 16 men and 14 women, anybody know what the total amount is? 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 16 plus 14 is 30 is the total amount. And then the probability that you select a woman would be? 14. 14 out of 30, yeah. So probability of not a woman. 16 out of 30. 16 out of 30. So now if you go to the, the formula, the, the yeah, the, the formula is gonna be the probability of not selecting a woman would be this one divided by this one. So it's gonna be 16 over 30 divided by 14 over 30, and then you write it horizontally and then you you um, keep the first one change division to multiplication flip the second one and there it is cancel you're always going to get cancellation to happen so that's always nice all right hey, they missed it how did you get 30 16 out of 30. oh because there's 16 men and 14 women so the total is going to be 16 plus 14, which is 30. That's a oh, total. Okay. So that's going to be your denominator. All right. And then the probability of selecting the women, there's 14 women, so 14 out of 30. All okay. right. At this point, if you don't want to rewrite it this way, you don't have to. You can just notice that 30 and 30s cancel if you want to do it this way, the shortcut. And so you're just going to have 16 over 14 which is the same thing you're going to get over here, 16 over 14. So there's two ways to do it, the shortcut and the longer way. So the shortcut would just be cancel out, to cancel out the denominators here, and you get 16 out of 14. Or if you would do it the long way, the 30s cancel this way, and you get 16 out of 14. So the final answer is going to be, uh, the final answer is going to be divide by 2, divide by 2, and you will get 8 out of seven. So eight to seven are the odds. All right. 
So there's two ways to write your final answer as a fraction, or you can use this this way. Yeah. All right. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number four. All right, number four says the odds against John. So once again, it's against. So it sounds like it's always against. Most of these problems have been against. So the formula is going to be not versus is. So against John being admitted to the college of his choice are nine to two. Find the probability that John is admitted. All right, so remember what we do. So let's see, the, they tell you what the odds are. So that nine represents, um, so it's because it's against, that means the first number is not being admitted, not being admitted, because it's against. If it was in favor, then it would have been being admitted first, but since it's against, the first number represents not being admitted. The second number represents being admitted. All right, being admitted. All right, so there we go. So now we can do this. Um, all right, so the total number, the probability that John is admitted there's a total of, remember what we do, we have to add these two numbers to get the total, which is 11. All right, and then the probability of being admitted is two, right? Two out of 11. So that is the final answer. Two out of 11. All right, what's the probability that John is not admitted? So the same thing is going to be, the total is once again 11, nine plus two again, and then not admitted is nine is not being admitted, so nine out of 11. Professor, can you scroll back so I can write that down, please? Yeah. Okay, I just had a couple more things to write. I'm done. I, I got it. All right, sounds good. All right. So let's look at number five. Suppose that the probability <clears throat> that all parts needed to assemble a bookcase are included in the carton is seven out of eight. Determine the odds in favor. All right, this time it's in favor. That's a keyword. of um, the odds in favor of the carton contain, including all the parts needed. All right, so the formula for in favor, if we look back over here, is the probability that it does happen divided by it does not happen. So does divided by does not. So the probability that includes all parts divided by probability that it does not include all parts. All right, so let's find the probability that, um, <clears throat> that it includes all the parts. So do we know that? Do we know the probability that it includes all the parts? I think we do. The probability that all the parts needed to assemble a bookcase are included is seven eighths. So we do know the top, the probability that all the parts are included is seven eighths. So does anybody know what the probability of, of it? If the seven eighths represents the probability of all the parts being included, what's the probability that it does not include all the parts? One out of eight? Yeah, you got it. One out of eight because it has to add up to one. So seven eighths plus one eighth equals eight eighths, which is one. So therefore, the probability is one eighth. You're right because it has to add up to one. All right. 
Um, so now we can, you can do the shortcut if you want. And then that's your answer. So seven to one. Or you can do the long way, which is seven eighths divided by one eighth, which is the same thing as seven eighths times eight over one. You multiply by the reciprocal, cancel out the eighths, and you still get the same answer. I kind of prefer the shortcut, but it's up to you. All right, so yeah, the odds in favor of the cart carton, including all of the needed parts is seven to one. I think that might be all of it. Let's see if there's any more. Yeah, that's it. We are done. So odds, that's how you do odds. I think the hardest part is just to remember this, these two formulas. <clears throat> but once you know these two formulas, then you hopefully you can figure it out. But um, it is open notes. The test is open notes, so you don't really have to memorize it. You can always refer to the notes if you need to for the test or the quiz or whatever. Uh, let's see, we have a little bit of time. Maybe we can do one homework problem. <clears throat> let's go back to 11-2 homework. <clears throat> Here it is, 11-2. Oh man, I don't have it here. Does anybody need me to, to post it or does everybody have the book? I have the book, Mr. Arnaldez. It's oh, okay. Good. All right, good. Um, all right, so um, let's see, 11.2. All right, let's try number 13. All right, it says, a fair die is tossed, determine the odds against. So there's a key word, against. All right, so let's find the probability. All right, first we'll find the probability of getting a two, and then we'll find the probability of not a two. So on a standard die, anybody know what the probability that you roll a two is? Uh, two out, uh, one out of six. Yeah, it's just one out of six because there's only one two and there's six six um, numbers on the die. And then what's the probability that you don't get a two on a standard die? Uh, five out of six. Yeah, five out of six because there's five numbers that are not two and there's six total numbers. All right, so it says against. So if you remember the formula for against, it's going to be the probability that you do not get a two divided by the probability that you do get a two. So that's the formula for odds against. The probability that it doesn't happen divided by the probability that it does happen. So the probability that it does not happen is five out of six. The probability that it does happen is one out of six. So five to one. Yeah, you guys wanna do the shortcut? It's way faster, right? Yeah, that's what I did. Five to one. All right, so that's how you do that. Let's just do one more. We'll do one of the, the cards down here. So we did number 13. This is the answer. All right, now let's do number 19, a face card. So it says determine the odds against again. So, uh, all right, of a face card. So let's let's find the probability of a face card, and then we'll find the probability of twelve out of fifty-two. Not yeah, face card. All right, so there's twelve face cards, right, in the deck, and then how many of them are not face cards? Forty. Yeah, so you would do 52 cards minus the 12 that are face cards, and that gives you 40, right? So that 40 yes. are not are not face cards. So 40 out of 52. And then since it says against, that means we're going to find the probability that it's not divided by the probability that it is a face card. So what's the probability that it's not a face card? 40 out of 12. 40, yeah. And then the probability that it is a face card. And then shortcut, cancel, cancel. We get 40 out of 12. We could simplify it. 
let's just simplify it. So if we simplify, we can divide by four. So we're gonna get 10 out of three, right? Three, yeah. 10, 10 to three. 10 to three. So 10, oops, 10, two, three. Those are the odds. All right, <clears throat> so that's good enough for today. I think that was enough. Uh, we did a, this kind of a tough, um, well, it's kind of new, right? It's a little bit new, so it's challenging, but once you get it, I think it's not so bad. So let's go ahead and take roll.